Your name is Duncan Reynolds. That'll work. Okay, how do you spell it again? R-E-N-A-L-D-S. A little different from the way that name is ordinarily. Yes, sir, but that's it. R-E-N-A-L-D-S. Here's what might give it away to some of you folks with a long T. The man didn't have the best handwriting in the world, so he gave what he wrote down to another guy who was in charge of some kind of a production thing, and he couldn't really read the name. The S that he put at the end of Duncan Reynolds' name looked like an O. So he figures, well, you know this guy, no wonder he looks like a Mexican. His name is Duncan Ronaldo. So, okay. So he made several films over the next two or three years. But in 1934, bad luck happened. 1934. Bad luck it was happening to a lot of people in 1934. That was your bad luck happened to Bonnie and Clyde. That was your bad luck happened to John Dillinger. And once again it happened to Duncan Ronaldo. He was discovered for overplaying his 90-day visa back there in Baltimore eight years earlier. So he was put in jail. Expedition for re deportation back to where he came from. Problem was, nobody really knew where he came from. What is your home country? I think it is Spain, but maybe, and he was starting to get smart. Rumor has it I'm from, from Romania. So they started filing records and records and records. And he stayed in jail a year because they couldn't deport him unless they knew what nation to deport him to. Finally, a heroic figure stepped up in 1935. A good friend of our friend, Cheryl Rogers Barnett, his name was Herbert J. Yates. He was in charge of a company called Republic Pictures who ground out Western movies. Herbert J. Yates stood up and said, you know, I'm going to make a character reference for Duncan Ronaldo, Duncan Middles. He's a good man. He's been a hard worker. And I'll see to it that he gets steady employment. And so he did. Meanwhile, one of his paintings was purchased by no one, none other than the First Lady herself, Eleanor Roosevelt. By 1936, President Franklin D. Roosevelt gave to Duncan Ronaldo a full pardon. He was off and running with his film career. He made several little films. Of course, they found out he could ride a horse. I guess they had horses in Spain or Romania or somewhere. They didn't have any on the ship they flew over, but that was beside the point. He appeared in a film called The Three Musketeers. Where are you going, sir, in such a hurry? Anyway, I digress. Finally, in 1940, meanwhile, that long about the time that Duncan Reynolds, Renault, Duncan, was going through all these problems of trying to figure out what his name was and where he was from and when he was born and who his parents were, all these trials he went through, there is a writer, a man who wrote books for a living, named William Sidney Porter. William Sidney Porter went by the stage name of O. Henry. Yeah, O. Henry, which also became the name of a candy bar. Red Fox used to talk about that. Well, I can't say that. There might be some family to view this one. So I won't. The Red Fox part is. I'll tell you all when the cameras quit rolling what Red Fox said about O. Henry. <laughs> So, he had created a character in one of his movies known as, well, sort of a southwestern version, originally, of Billy the Kid. Except he didn't call him Billy the Kid. But the rumors of this, they became a radio show based on this character. A very roguish character. Semi-outlaw. Almost another Pancho Villa. And there was a radio series, a comic series, and eventually it evolved into films and movies. There was an actor named Gilbert Rowland who played the role. The Gilbert Rowland began to have some alcohol problems, and so all of a sudden, in the early 40s, Duncan Ronaldo got the role, and he made seven of these films. Two or three, I'm sorry, for Republic Pictures, three more for Monogram Pictures, and one more for United Artists. And then in 1950, was the dawning of television. By this time, the character was no longer a roguish character. No, he was no longer a roguish character. In fact, he even shamed off that nasty mustache, which all rogues back then had. 
He was clean shaven, but he decided to get himself a fat, a fat sidekick with a mustache to play his partner in these in the new TV series. An actor named Leo Carrillo, who had been a veteran actor. So they teamed up together in 1949, and from 1949 through 1956, a six-season series, they teamed up to make one of the more memorable television shows in television history, Duncan Ronaldo, starring as the Sea School Kid. Leo Carrillo starring as Pancho. Then in every series, the now the Lone Ranger used to end his series by gallantly getting on his horse Silver, rearing Silver back up, taking off his hat, saying, Hello, Silver! Not Cisco and Pancho. Cisco would tell a little lame joke. Pancho would say, Oh, Pancho! Pancho would say, Oh, Cisco! Now, if you notice, you haven't heard any mention of Texas history whatsoever today. You wonder, what's this got to do with Texas history? Eh? Well, it's also my birthday Monday, and the very first time I ever, the very first time I ever watched a television show in my life was from a neighbor's house over in Fort Worth. And what was the very first show I ever saw on television? The Cisco Kid. Yeah. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and stop this store over there. Bye bye. Happy trails. That was good. Happy birthday, Lee. 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 <laughs> Guess what you want to say? Happy birthday, Lee. Uh, happy birthday, Lee. Happy birthday, Lee. Oh, she's gone.